All right, recording should be started. Welcome to the ACAPAG meeting for May 16, 2023. I got the date right. Uh, I believe I have to mention that this is a Hyperledger meeting and therefore the, an the Hyperledger antitrust policy notice applies. This is, if you need more information, it is in the meeting page, which I will post in the chat in a second. I just need to close the page and I will start also sharing the evidence that I'm, I don't know how this works. I apologize for the tardiness. All right, so putting in the chat, the link to the page if anybody wants it and I will be sharing my screen I don't record either how, how to do it, but that will, oh, there you go. Screen share. I think you guys should see my screen. It's on the meeting page. Today we have a couple different items on topic. Um, the first one in the list is, is the update on the code with us um, for the Anon Creds RS library in Agapi. I don't know if, um, Char, if, if you guys are ready to provide an update and demo, I believe Steven said that Daniel Blum, Blum is, uh, is sick today, so he was not going to be able to, to attend. Yeah, I, I can give a quick update um, whenever you're ready. Awesome. Yep. Then I'll stop sharing. You feel free to, to share if you need. Oh, great. Um, I'll just I'll just speak for now, giving a, a quick update. So we are wrapping up the revocation work. Uh, this, of course, has been um, a lot slower than we anticipated. We've been short on resources lately and just the complexity of revocation has slowed down the work. But we're, we're working on moving logic out of out of the old indie components so that the logic isn't distributed across many components working on refining the new Anoncred's admin API endpoints and um, reducing some redundancy we've discovered during the, in, in storage during the revocation process. Uh, we have finished updating to the more recent build of Anoncred's RS and the, the minor interface changes along with that. We completed the Tails file handling change where uh, in order to serve the, solve the um, circular dependency issue with the revocation registry ID. We're accepting the tails file by hash and just doing basic um, hash validation on the contents of the file. So um, okay. moving forward, despite uh, being short on resources and, and shooting for completion soon. Awesome. Thank you. That's going to be exciting to have ready yeah, to go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Great. Um, I forgot to ask at the very beginning, so I'm going to do it now before I move forward. If there's anybody new on the call that wants to introduce themselves and wants to say hello to the rest of the group, please speak now. It does not sound like there's anyone, so I'll carry on with the agenda. Um, the next topic is webhook issue. Uh, as you may have heard in the last meeting we had, we encountered a problem with one of our uh, DCGov users uh, with webhooks being fired twice with the same event state. Uh, this was an unintended bug that was introduced uh, with a change to prevent webhooks from um, getting into an, an unknown state. Uh, this was issued, uh, it will be released in the next release of Akapai. And then um, I think the, the suggestion that Kim Ebert made of like actually not firing the first webhook um, for multi-use connections made a lot of sense. So we went that way. That has been uh, wrapped up and it should be ready to go and not cause any more trouble. So that's great. Um, we are doing, a bunch of work on the mediator um, function in Akapai and adding Redis uh, persistent queues to it. Uh, in particular, Jason Sherman and Jason Saratok are working on it. Um, I don't know which one of you two guys is on the call and wants to provide an update 
uh, on the work that is being done. Uh, let me know if you need to share the screen. I can stop sharing as well. Um, I can provide a quick update. Um, we don't need to share the screen. Um, okay. Yeah, so Shanja had previously developed a, a plugin to store all events um, in a queue in Redis. Um, this would be important for a high availability instance where it's in the middle of processing something and the pod gets evacuated or 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 um, some other issue comes along. Whatever it's processing would get lost. Um, so the idea is to store everything in Redis. Um, and again, Shanja did all that work. Um, and we have a need to apply that functionality to Akapai that's acting as a mediator. Um, again, it's going to have a lot of throughput, going to have a lot of um, events to manage. Um, so we've been working to combine those two features into um, basically one instance of Akapai deployed, behaving with that and the Redis. Um, so Sherman. Um, he can speak to himself more, but he's been standing that up and looking at load testing and some performance metrics. And I've been looking at standing up and deploying um, Redis uh, with all the kind of validating all the work that Shanjot has done and getting up to speed on it. Um, and now we're, we've been able to deploy it locally with some small errors and quirks that we're still trying to work out. Um, but we're close to, I think, being able to, to show something soon um, that will... Yeah, bring, bring these two features together and provide a really valuable um, feature set. Awesome. You want to speak yeah, so the, um, the uh, Kim Eber had done some load testing for the mediator using AFJ um, and running out of AWS pods, I think. If he's on the call, then he can confirm. But um, we wanted to get some metrics from the server side, so actually from how the mediator itself was working. So I was working on getting a, an elk stack in place, which is now in the um, main um, Akapai repo that anybody can use if they want to do some local metrics testing. Um, and then as we were going through that, um, we found a bug in multi-tenancy mediation uh, when the tenants themselves are in charge of the mediator. So not like a global setting to say all tenants use this, that each one of them does that. So we fixed that bug that's in place. And yeah, like Cyro said, we're uh, trying to set up a base, basic multi-tenants or basic mediator with without Redis, get some performance um, metrics on that, and then put up the one with Redis and see how that, uh, what the gains are or, or if any um, on that. So hopefully by next uh, meeting, we'll have some kind of uh, some metrics on that. But yeah, like Cyrus said, we're just working out through a couple of little kinks in there, but progress is yeah, um, something else I do, I just want to share. I'm not sure if it's directly related or not, but um, what I also did was deploy and add Redis and the cluster and the plugin um, to the Aries uh, test harness, uh, the Aries agent test harness, and run that test suite with Akapai that was actually using this Redis plugin um, and saw no change at all, which is perfect. Um, so that was something concrete that we've um, been able to, to validate that work with. So um, that's an update there. And there's a pull request to add um, Redis as kind of a common service in that going forward. So um, an update on the test harness as well that's related. Awesome. Sounds great. And yeah, the Aries agent test harness kind of like came to the rescue as an orchestrator. Uh, seems like a great idea since we are probably going to be doing tests with this type of scenario a lot more in the future. That's awesome. Uh, anybody has any comments or questions about this topic? Doesn't sound like it. Cool. Uh, next in the queue is Shanjot. Um, we have a couple changes that we're pushing to Akapai to meet some of the requirements that we have from the BCGOP perspective of hosting uh, multi-tenanted uh, agents. Uh, I'll let Shanjot speak a little more uh, about it. Um, the, the, I guess the two main items are related to tenant-specific settings and how to let each tenant 
receive their own logs for consumption. So I'll turn it over to Shanjot. You need to share the screen. Uh, I do. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing on my end then. Okay, uh, can you see the Hack Henry document? Yep. Okay, so basically first is the uh, ability to configure a startup uh, like flags, the settings uh, at tenant level. So basically when the, when handling the sub wallet, like basically when we are creating the sub wallet for a tenant or updating a sub wallet, uh, add the ability to uh, specify settings so that that is applied to the profile, to the uh, profile associated with the tenant. So basically this is the particular issue and, uh, and these are the startup uh, flags uh, that were uh, required to be uh, to be able to uh, set up at the uh, tenant level. So I do have a PRN uh, for that. Uh, that is uh, ready for review. So basically, the uh, overall in the gist is basically uh, added a extra settings uh, dictionary field to the request body uh, for these two endpoints. So one, uh, the post endpoint is for creating a new uh, sub wallet. And then for the second one is for updating an existing sub wallet uh, for a tenant. Uh, so basically the extra settings would, uh, a dictionary would have uh, as the key, will have the name of the uh, the startup, uh, uh, startup parameter. So all these are supported. And then the value would be associated value that you want to set, set it up. So basically for in this example, a capi log level, it could be info, debug, error, critical warning. So uh, this is an example, the the other two parameters are Boolean. Uh, so basically true or false. So this is the particular example uh, that I included in here. Uh, the PR, basically uh, it's, it's working. So basically I tested it with the debugger. So basically simply uh, you, using these endpoints, uh, play around with these, uh, 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 with these settings. And then uh, when you basically, I was calling the connection get connections uh, endpoint and have had the debugger. Uh, so basically, then uh, the uh, for the profile, uh, the settings were being updated at the at the tenant profile level. So that's how I kind of verified that it is working as it ended. So this is the status of the first uh, issue. The second is, as Emiliano mentioned, to be able to have uh, log access at per tenant level, and also. Uh, kind of uh, to have the access so that it can be consumed or ingested at uh, by elk stack. Uh, so basically you could generate visualizations, visualizations or you can query uh, Elasticsearch by the tenant identifier to like uh, look up like all the logs for a particular tenant. Uh, so again, this is the issue. Uh, I have a draft PRN and Akapai. Uh, so this particular uh, PR builds upon the per tenant settings, uh, the extra settings uh, uh, parameter, the field that I was showing uh, above. So in there, I, I, I added another uh, flag. It's basically Akapai log alias. So this is the kind of a human readable tenant identifier. Uh, so basically, if the tenant ID, let's say it's one, two, three, and you want the logs for that particular data, tenant to be identified. So you can put in uh, one, two, three as a log area so that uh, when the logs are generated, so this is kind of a sample log. So it will inside these braces, you can see the tenant identifier would be included. And then this, you can query Elasticsearch by uh, by this, like including the this uh, within the brace and the tenant identifier. In the query, you can grab all those logs. Uh, in terms of implementation, basically uh, in this particular uh, file, uh, uh, just one single file, I I put put in a uh, utility function, get logger with handler. So what it does is it accepts the settings from the profile, and then a logger instance like uh, any the the file uh, any Python file in Acrobat that is calling this uh, the logger uh, that is. Uh, Generated like with the get logger function, you include this as a parameter, and then if it would see uh, uh, this particular log dot file is already implemented, so this is the this will be the file path where 
you want the logs to be written. So basically the idea behind this is that we want the logs uh, to be written to a file in addition to how it already kind of does the uh, output set in, in a console. So it's uh, it supports both. So using the log file, it will uh, create a uh, file handler uh, and add that file handler to the logger uh, instance. Uh, so that is for the file and then uh, the uh, standard out uh, handler would be for the uh, console uh, stream handler. So uh, that is shown in this example. That is also added to the handler and that it is returned back. Uh, so this way we kind of avoid a lot of code duplication. So basically each of those uh, files would have to call this utility function, pass their logger. And if the uh, logger needs to be updated with the handler uh, classes, it will do that and return that logger. And then uh, with minimal changes, we can achieve that. And that's, uh, that's what I have, uh, Emiliano. Great. Uh, I have a question here. Um, the alias for the tenant is is there is any restriction on that on, on what type of name can you add? Uh, will we be able to use the the wallet name uh, that was used at tenant creation for that possibly? Uh, or what what are the thoughts uh, behind that? Could be anything. Just something that's uniquely uniquely identified by the uh, tenant. The only the only concern that I'm that I'm wondering is if the tenant is able to specify their own name and for whatever unlucky reason they pick a name that is already used by somebody else then we might have a big overlap in, in log statements um as, as Sean job mentioned just to give a, a quick overview uh, of these two items the idea here is to be able to generate a, a log file that has um scoping of each log statement for the tenant that triggered it. Uh, that way it can be consumed by a platform such as Elasticsearch or, or Splunk, whatever your choice is, and then create log aggregation and log streaming for each one of the tenants by setting the correct query parameters in the, in the query and, and not have Akapai deal with that. Uh, that seemed a little bit overkill and probably not a good separation of concerns. And then um, for the part above about the tenant settings, um, as you may have noticed, there's like a, a reduced list of what the actual startup parameters are. Um, this is the first cut. We picked these as uh, items are relatively commonly used, at least in our uh, BC Gov deployments and use cases. But the pattern that Shenzhou demonstrated can obviously be expanded to add other uh, parameter identifiers in here. Uh, is anybody else using multi tenancy? Oh, there you go. Jason, you have the hand up. Ah, just got to find the mute button. Um, is there going to be issues with file locks there? Like if there's a hundred tenants all spewing out <laughs> info level logs, could be quite a lot of writing, right? So have we have have we considered that? That I'm not quite sure if how the how the grabbing file handlers and stuff like that's going to work when there's hundreds of people writing to. I'm assuming the same log file. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, I let I have not thought about it personally. Uh, yeah, I did not get that far. I'll let change up. Timing. Uh, me too. I'm not too sure. Like uh, I'll have to look up and also maybe kind of devise a way to test that uh, to come up with an uh, answer. But uh, I'm not sure like how that uh, that will be handled with this implementation. Okay. My, my my initial feeling is that if if it is being handled right now uh, already, just without like a scope in the log statement uh, it should be possible to to get something similar going um without major concerns but it's, it's a good point. and the other uh, thing is like each of the file will have its own so like a uh, base connection manager like uh, th that particular file will have its own uh logger instance dispatcher or something else will have its own logger instance so th those are separate from each other so that kind of 
kind of limits uh, like uh, uh, conflicts in a way. Like it's not like the e, there's just one logger that is handling everything. Mm -hmm. Jason's point though was was good. I think we, we might want to once we have the code finalized, one we might want to try and test it uh, maybe with some of the load testing scripts that they're they're developing for mediation. Maybe we can modify and use, reuse the same pattern to to try something like this. I was just going to suggest that I mean this will sh should shake out in a in a load test of some kind of reasonable size to see if there's going to be issues there. So I was, yeah. yeah, so yeah, that's a good. Very good point. Thank you. Anybody else with comments or questions about any of these two topics? Just saying, I'll just say I'm pretty excited about having those settings moved up to a tenant level. That's pretty cool. So I think it's a really yep. good project. Yeah. Yeah. We, one of the reasons that like, at least on our end, drove the decision is we we are trying to consolidate a lot of the deployments that we have, and having the tenants being able to specify their own settings rather than having to depend on the main instance settings is obviously a very very big requirement. So looking forward to it as well. All right. Sounds like nobody else has questions about the topics we presented. Uh, that was everything we had prepared for this session. Uh, we can have some open conversations if there's anybody that wants to suggest topics or wants to bring up some some item <clears throat> in uh, particular. Yeah. Uh, 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 do you hear me? Yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to start the video to present myself shortly. I, I'm working for ID Lab, and uh, we are a nonprofit organization, and we are involved in working with uh, a few of the uh, provinces in Canada. And uh, I mean, during one of our uh, meeting, and uh, um, I'm more on the DevOps side to say, uh, we have the question being raised about uh, hardware on clouds. Okay, so to give you an idea, it's coming from a security point of view, whereas um, instead of uh, storing the private keys inside uh, any software, you delegate that to a um, to, um, hardware enclave where uh, those keys are stored and some calculation with those keys are made. So essentially, you're uh, exporting the cryptography part of your cryptography to a to a hardware enclave. So of course, in the cloud, there's no such thing as hardware separation. Okay, I mean, if you look in your phone, you have a specialized module to do that, but in the cloud, it's not. So essentially, it will be created a dedicated instance. So, and my question is. Uh, uh, since uh, nowadays um, the the URSA uh, library has been uh, well, uh, how to say that deprecated and the the Akapa is getting back uh, inside some library um, the cryptography. I would like to know if there was some if there was any question before on hardware enclave and how that could interface with Akapa or it's just something totally new to the community. Thanks for the question. I, I personally don't know about anything around that. Uh, I'm virtually looking at Andrew as he's probably the most knowledgeable person in that realm. I don't know if you have any comments, Andrew, about these. Um, support for hard hardware enclave for credentials, was it? Or well, uh, for, example, for secrets if... for, for, the, for the keys to manage the wallet in particular that uh, Bruno was mentioning. Yeah. Essentially, the I mean, the and I'm I'm asking for uh, I mean some provinces friends essentially, but um, essentially the industry standard right now if when you have a private key to manage, you don't store that in your in your software at all, not in your memory. You delegate that to a to a hardware yeah. enclave. So I would like to know if there was some question around that. I'm I'm under the impression that not, 
And well, after that, we'll have to do to see how we can help introducing that if it's even possible. Um, I don't think it's something that's on the roadmap for Akapai right now, but it's it should be technically possible for like um, your did signing keys. Okay. Um, it, it it depends on the algorithms supported in the hardware wallet, but generally they would support things like P256 and ED25519. Okay. Um, for credentials, it's harder because we, we can't put CL signature keys in there, but um, we could do things like uh, JWTs or SD JOTs. Okay. Um, using a hardware wallet as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Um. And uh, yeah, I mean, internally, Akapai generally uses dependency injection for these things. So it would be a matter of injecting a remote wallet um, instead of a local one. OK, I see. OK. OK. Well, I mean, it's a start of an answer. I understand it's a complicated topic, and it's, lands, it's, it's coming a bit uh, Unannounced, but okay. <laughs> we yeah, we we do generally use uh, async methods for for things like signing, so it is possible to make like external calls to do that. Okay. Um, architecturally, a better design might be to queue up those requests though, and uh, continue processing after they've been performed because. I know some of these KMSs are more efficient if you can batch your requests. Okay. Okay. Batch yeah, your yeah. Signing requests and send them all together. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. I see That's Alberto has his um, his hand up now. Yep. Hey guys, uh, Alberto here from Instant. Um, been following some of the repos here. Um, we have um, we have different you know actors in kind of this SSI ecosystem. We use Akapai for you know creating issuer verifier and uh, of course the mediator. And then uh, we also participate a little bit on the bifold channel and the group meetings as well. Uh, we kind of based our wallet on the open source bifold. So uh, as of right now, we're kind of going through like a just kind of experimenting, right? Um, kind of connecting them, communicating between them. So <clears throat> um, right now I'm sort of just trying to, you know, gear myself into just learning mostly. Um, and I know in the past there was a, a risk condition, if I'm not mistaken, with the mediator. And I believe since we uh, migrated to Oscar and uh, updated to 0.8.1 or 0.8.0, I'm not sure which one had those those new updates. Um, I guess I have a few questions. So the first one is, um, I think uh, there isn't any like release notes on how to update it. Um, and just for some context, um, we, we currently do not have anything built like in a production environment where we need to migrate, you know, things from one thing to another. We're, you know, we're open to start it from zero. So what would be the proper way to actually, you know, launch a 0.8.1 Akapai mediator so we can get that uh, race condition fixed on our end? Because we did see the issue on the bifold. Yeah. So, um, so basically what you're asking is like how to, to, up, to update from the indie wallet to the Oscar wallet and follow that migration that 0.8.1. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So if that's the if that's the best option, I mean, if it if we can launch an, 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 a whole new instance from zero, I mean, we can do that as well. Because like I said, we're we, not doing anything right now. Yep. Yeah, we we have updated our instances uh, from zero eight zero to zero eight one. Uh, Wade Barnes right. has completed the process, so I'm yes. I would I would turn it over to him to provide yes. some input. I know there's and, some scripts that can be used. Right. Yeah, so I've got I some, I've got some notes. Um, I. Give them to somebody on Discord some rough notes that I that's did. That's me. Okay. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And yeah, I've been working with it. I just haven't had since I'm kind of all over the place with bifold and trying to find the best uh the best way to start. 
and I haven't answered your thread, in, but I do appreciate the uh, the notes. Uh, but uh, is it easy? Is it just as easy as just me cloning the repo uh, from the latest that you have on the you know on the main branch and then uh, launching that into an instance? Uh, is it that easy, or do I have to do more? No, to if you if you've got an existing indie wallet, then you need the you need to migrate the wallet. So the steps that I gave you um, cover cover a, a few things. It covers a an upgrade. Um, if I recall correctly, it covers an upgrade uh, of the, the, the storage from uh, an older version of Postgres to Postgres 14. Uh, it covers the migration from Indy to Ascar and then the upgrade uh, from um, a previous version to the uh, 8.1. And basically, right. basically you do you do the upgrade to 8.1 first. Um, mm -hmm. and then that basically does it that does does some conversion on the connection records inside mm -hmm. the, uh, the wallet. And then from there you go through the um you go through the Postgres upgrade and the and the migration. Um if you have any issues whatsoever, just feel free to reach out and DM me on on Discord. Okay. Now, um, and, and sorry, I'm just trying to understand. So, is the Postgres is that uh, is that on the Akapai side or is that on the wallet side? Uh, well, I <laughs> it's it's on the Akapai side, so it's Akapai's wallet, which is actually what we're we're so the oh, okay. wallet is kind of being overloaded um oh, okay in this context wallet wallet means not only like when i when i'm saying wallet depending on the context it either means the mobile application or this actually what we're now calling secure storage which is Akapai's wallet. oh okay i see that's where i was kind of lost but i understand now perfect all right yeah okay i'll, I'll do that then um and i guess a follow-up question um so uh, on your end, way then after on your team has can you confirm whether um, that race condition that we we had before is that uh, is that like uh, resolved or yeah is it just better perform it, okay. it, well you get better performance and and the race condition seems to have gone away nice and then just one last question then um, I, I see I think. BC Gov has. Uh, I'm not sure if you're with BC Gov, but yep. uh, I think uh, you guys have an open source repo with OpenShift. Uh, and and please excuse me, I'm trying to understand lots of this back and stuff. I'm more of a front end guy. Um, so it seems to me that you guys are launching um, various instances of the mediator. Is that correct? Yep. So basically, what the the um the OpenShift mediator is basically a uh, OpenShift configurations wrapped around the um, the Aries mediator uh, repository. So basically, it's mm -hmm. just all of the templates that we need to deploy um, the mediator into an OpenShift environment. Um, right. As far as the OpenShift environments go, we have like a dev test prod. Uh, nice. Instant. Now, uh, is the OpenShift done to make sure there's a high availability? No. With the mediator? No. Is it that's one okay. thing with the mediator at the at the moment? Um, is it it due to due to the to the WebSocket nature of it? Um, right. It, it doesn't okay. scale very well as far as HA is concerned. Um, there mm -hmm. is some work being done around that. Um, okay. And. So yeah, yeah. Stay, I asked stay, stay cause, tuned because yeah. there there are some announcements that'll be coming out at some point in time <laughs> about um, about updates to to mediators. So yeah, the reason I asked that is because uh, I'm thinking like of, of of a of a production environment, right, where you can take the mediator to you know may have you know where it can have you know different lots of you know user requests. I know you guys use Locus. I've used a little bit of that to kind of load test the mediator. Yeah, you know, we're kind so, of thinking, yeah, like how we can take it, you know, to the next level. I guess you can say that. And I was going to ask you, okay, how do you communicate between the instances? Because I know because of the web sockets and all. Yeah, uh, but that's, that's I know the, that, that's the issue yeah. right now. So um, part of the work with the Red SQ is to um, to make the mediator resilient. So the Red SQ will have a, a persistent queue for all of the, the communication nice. um, for the mediator. 
Um, okay. It doesn't deal with the HA side of things, but it makes it resilient. So if something gets knocked over, um, it'll come back up and just continue on from where it was. Um, the, the way that we're dealing with scale right now is we're um, vertically scaling instead of horizontally scaling um, mm -hmm. to deal with load. Um, the tests that I've done, and Kim Ebert's done more testing um, uh, using Locust that I have, but <clears throat> um, the testing I've done, I've pushed the test to the point where I have issues on my machine with the mm, yeah. test uh, with the locust uh, side of things and Akapai's the, the media are still keeping up with it. Okay. Now let me ask you just one last question. I promise last one. <laughs> um, so I know the media, are, all it really does is just relay the messages between the different actors, right? So right. it's, it's, it's my kind of assumption that um, it, it's not really using too much on a CPU, you know. No, it's not. Uh, it, it's really there. The, the purpose of it being there is, is for when, um, when there's communications and the uh, mobile wallet isn't available to communicate. Okay, got it. Got it. So is it safe to say if, you know, if I launch a Meteor instance on a, you know, on a big instance and in, let's say a cloud service like AWS, um, at least for maybe a couple hundred users, um, would it be safe to say, you know, it'd be okay to use? And uh, yeah, we're already running it with a few hundred users. Nice. And what kind of instance uh, are you guys running? Like what's the... We're, we're using OpenShift it's oh uh, okay of course yeah. right okay got it nice all right that's pretty much all my questions thank you Wayne. the largest impact to scaling of the mediator is the uh, cpu uh, performance of a single core mm. um, and so if you're looking at uh, trying to scale up your mediator uh, you'll want to pick the uh, fastest cpu that you can pick okay um, I don't think Occupy uses more than about two CPU, uh, uh, two CPU cores at a time. <clears throat> nice. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Any other questions or or thoughts from anybody? One thing that occurred to me. As um, Alberto asked the question about OpenShift, out of curiosity, uh, I guess most people are running Akapai in a Kubernetes environment. How would the community feel about having a Helm chart uh, to deploy agent and dependencies? Any thoughts about that? Any? Concerns? So, Emiliano, are you asking, like, instead of using OpenShift to use Kubernetes? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, basically, OpenShift is a layer on top of Kubernetes, right? And uh, right now, there is no standard uh, redistribution package for an Akapai uh, deployment. Everybody has mm. to. For the most part, either we use something that is out there or bake their own. And I'm mm -hmm. just wondering if the community feels it would be useful uh, to have like a Helm chart that allows to deploy agent and dependencies. So I guess the, the Postgres um, database for the wallet in particular in this case. I mean, there, oh. there shouldn't be any obstacle to that. I mean, we. At ID Lab, we are running uh, the RES test harness in Kubernetes, actually. So I, I mean, I, I wouldn't see any problems for run, having a Akapai running in Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. All right. Most mostly out of curiosity, uh, that's something that like we are thinking about uh, as part of our um, op more operations, like type of activities uh, for PC Gob. So I wanted to also get, try to get the feedback from the community and see what, if there were any thoughts against it in particular, but it sounds like it might be something useful. Um, 
If there's no other questions, I think we have exhausted all of the topics. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention, uh, you'll find it on the page. Uh, there is an Anon Creds workshop that's going to be hosted um, and led by Stephen Curran on May 31st. Uh, there's a link here to the page describing the, the workshop. Um, feel free to sign up and, and join if you are interested in the topic or spread the word if you think there's anybody that might be interested in joining and learning a little more about Anon Creds. And yeah, that being said, I think that's all for today. Uh, we're wrapping up a little early, but I don't think anybody's going to complain. Uh, I will stop the recording now if I find the controls.